Man, who doesn't love a good board game? Waiting for the game to unfold is part of the fun, but it can be so frustrating if you don't know why you're playing or why you need to be part of it. In our brand new series, Wait For It, we will learn how to watch for and put our hope in Jesus. We will meet John, Mary, Simeon, and Anna, people who waited for a savior to change their lives. We will learn that everyone needs a savior, that the savior will change everything, that God will do impossible things, and that Jesus is the only thing that we've been waiting for. Today, we're gonna talk about John the Baptist, who made a way for Jesus, but that's for a little later in today's video. For now, let's review our memory verse for this series. It's found in Micah chapter seven, verse seven. It says, but as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my savior, my God will hear me. That's Micah chapter seven, verse seven. Got it memorized? Let's say it once more. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my savior, my God will hear me. That's Micah chapter seven, verse seven. Great job, guys. Let's keep things rolling with some praise and worship. Chains of sin, captive to the hopelessness. I heard you calling now, drowning the voice of doubt. Freedom 
Brandon, how's it going? Shh, 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 shh. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, is everything okay? I just can't seem to beat this level. Every time I get to this one particular place, I always get stuck. I wish I had something to help me just get past this level. Well, I do know that we can actually learn something from this situation. Seriously? What? Well, here's the thing. We all get stuck every once in a while. You, me, and all of our friends. We could probably agree that we felt like the problems we're facing require some outside help from someone we trust, right? That is so true. I can sometimes feel stuck, but how does that help me? Well, if you know that you're stuck, you also know that you need help, right? Right. We could all use help from something like this. Candy? No, a lifesaver. Oh. Yeah, if we understand that we need help, we can focus on getting that help, right? right? When we get stuck, we need help from someone who knows how to help. I mean, think about it. If there's a fire, you're not gonna call a doctor the same way you don't call the Amazon store if your cat gets stuck in the tree, right? That is true. So you're saying it's not enough to know that I need help, but knowing where I can get help is also important. Exactly. Which is why I'm so excited for today's lesson, because we're going to learn that Jesus provides a very unique kind of help, because Jesus saves in all situations. Wow, so Jesus can help me get past this level? Uh, you know, probably not, but I do believe that if you uh, just do a wall jump into a barrel roll and then just dive, you could probably get past that level. Oh, okay. Okay, look, don't judge me. I like to play video games every once in a while, so I know a few things. Look, why don't you just try it and just let me know how that works out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, while he's trying to figure that out, let's go to the Bible and discover why all of this is so important. For those of you who remember what's been going on with God's people, you'll remember that they endured some difficult times, but God promised a savior would come. So they waited and waited. Many prophets talked about the savior that would come, this was way before that they knew the Savior would be Jesus. Prophets also talked about someone who would come before Jesus and be a messenger who would prepare the way for the Savior. That person was John the Baptist. In this story, John was preparing a way for the Savior, but it wasn't by cleaning or cooking a multi-course meal. John was preparing people's hearts by baptizing them and letting them realize that they indeed needed a Savior. So. In John chapter one, we see that John is Jesus' messenger and reminded people that everyone needs saving. But it's not the kind of saving that people are thinking of. The Savior was coming to save the people from being separated from God by their sins. And we know that anything that separates us from God is sin. John told the people that they needed to repent, to say that they were sorry for disobeying God, and have a new relationship with God. In Mark chapter one, verses seven through eight, we see that we need to be connected to God. When the first humans disobeyed God, they felt disconnected from God. They needed help. The same is true for all of us because we all sin and we all need saving. Which leads us right into our big idea for this week. Everyone needs a savior. Simple, right? Well, let's head out and find out what's happening on this week's episode of Grow TV. Hey there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And boy, do we have a fun show for you today. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hello and welcome my friends, my amigos, my compadres, my acquaintances, my confidants, and other things. Welcome! Anywho, I'm pretty excited today because I just found out we started a new series this month. And the name of the theme is... Drumroll please. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Wait for it. No. Oh. Oh no, the actual series is called Wait For It. <laughs> My mistake. It's called Wait For It because we're going to talk a lot about waiting. Waiting for what? Well, I don't know yet. We'll find out together. 
But while we wait for it, <laughs> we can play some board games. I'm not bored. <laughs> Get it. Now let's see, what game should we play first? We play Battleship? Maybe Monopoly? Or we're gonna play like a game like football or basketball. Well, maybe not, because last time I did that, I dunked so hard and made so many touchdowns that people got scared of me. So, that's probably not the best idea. I'm pretty intimidating. Ha! Or maybe we can even play catch. Catch! <coughs> what about musical chairs? There's not a lot of room to do this. Huh. Or maybe perhaps charades. I was a piece of plywood. <laughs> wow, I gotta say, this is a little weird. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be a little weird. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, thank goodness. Carl, how you doing, man? Sam! Hi, everybody. My good friend Sam. We go way back. Hey, Sam, do you remember that one time we found a moose in the Walmart parking lot? Do I? That thing almost ran me over if you hadn't done the thing with that. Yeah, and then when you whoosh! Oh, remember the time we did this thing? Guy who had the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are some good times. So, Carl, what are you up to today? Well, we heard we started a new series today, right? Oh, yeah. I'm so excited that it's called Wait For It. Wait For What? It. What's it? No, Wait For It. That's the name. Oh, yeah. Duh. I knew that. Well, I was actually just trying to play some games. Oh, cool. That sounds like fun. Yeah, but to be honest, I guess I was having a hard time. Why is that? Well, I was playing games that really didn't work for just myself. Oh, well, too bad you don't have someone to play with now. <laughs> right? Totally stinks! I just wish there was some... <gasps> Wait a minute! There it is. You can play with me. There I was thinking I didn't have anyone. Then BOOM! You showed up to save the day. Do you think you play with me? Of course, Carl. But before we play anything, don't you think we should talk about the Bible story? I mean, I think that's what the kids are waiting for. Oh, right. <laughs> Carry on. Sweet. So do you know who John the Baptist is? Sure I do. My neighbor's name is John and he goes to the Baptist church. <laughs> no, I mean John the Baptist from the Bible. He was a man who loved God a lot. Well, I like him already. You see, God had a very special plan for John. What was it? See, back then, everyone knew that God had been promising a savior for a long time. Really? How long? Hundreds and hundreds of years. <gasps> wow! Right? So John knew that one day the Son of God would come. But they didn't know when, so he had to do something very important. Take a shower. Not quite. John had to prepare the way for the Savior, and he did that by making sure people's hearts were ready. How did he do that? John told everyone to ask God to forgive their sins. Then everyone who listened to John's message got baptized in the river. Wow, that's amazing. So that's how they got ready for Jesus. Wait, Jesus is the Savior we're talking about, right? Oh, Carl, spoilers. But yeah, it's Jesus. Ha, I knew it. But the people didn't know that yet. John wanted to remind everyone that they were waiting for the Savior and to help them get ready for when the Savior came. How cool is that? Yup. And just like you had to wait to play a game till you had someone else with you, John also waited for Jesus. He knew that Jesus would not only save the day, but that he would be the Savior to all people. Totally. I guess we all had the same goal that John did. We're all meant to prepare for Jesus and live for him because everyone needs a savior. Talk about saving the day. You just said our big idea, Carl. Sam. <laughs> no, I didn't. I did. This is a big idea. So these big ideas, everyone needs a savior. That's right. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One. Two. Three. three. Everyone, everyone needs, needs a savior. savior. Yeah. <laughs> they do. Good job, everyone. You do. I do. You all do. I don't need a saver. Life saver. Sam. Yeah? 
You know what time it is? Um, no. <laughs> it's game time! Finally. Oh yeah. This game is called, whoever doesn't have long hair has to eat chicken nuggets till they cry. Um, look at the time. I gotta get going. Sorry, Carl. See you next week, kiddos. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV. <gasps> uh, Brandon, what are you doing? Well, Christmas is coming up, and I want to make sure that I have the best surprise face. Can you help me? You know, there's a lot of things that you can practice for, but being Ooh, surprised no isn't necessarily one of those things. I think that was good enough practice. I think you've definitely given him a lot to think about. You know, I'm glad you were here. I always needed someone to help me whenever I feel stuck, and now you've helped Brandon whenever he felt stuck. So do you remember when we mentioned before that the prophets of old talked about the Savior as well as the messenger who would come to prepare a way for the Savior? This that we're getting ready to talk about is one of those prophecies. Yeah. It's found in Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord to make a straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. Because the breath of the Lord blows on them, Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. The person who's telling us this story wants us to hear how important it is to get ready for the Savior. The Bible passage says things like, fill in the valleys and level the mountains. It sounds like when we're trying to make our house look presentable for guests. You know, John the Baptist wanted people to prepare for the Savior in very much the same way. But instead of making themselves and their homes look nice, John wanted people to prepare their hearts. Isaiah wants us to know that lots of things are flimsy and changing, but God's word never. So when the Bible tells us that we need a savior, we can trust this is true. Absolutely. Well, now what? What does God want us to do about what we've learned? Today we heard about how John the Baptist was Jesus's messenger and helped to prepare the way for Jesus. Just like everything that is important, the coming of the savior required preparation. Right, John prepared for Jesus's arrival to the earth, but we can also prepare for Jesus. We can prepare our hearts for Jesus to enter our hearts. And if you believe that we need Jesus to be our savior, what are some ways that we can prepare our hearts for him? One way I can think of is by admitting I make mistakes sometimes, and I need to help choose the right things to say and do. You are 100% right, Daniel. You know what, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending people into our lives who remind us that we need a savior. Help us to also prepare a way for Jesus by turning away from our sins and making our hearts a place where you would want to stay. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Amen, boys and girls. Man, that was so great. I'm so excited about this brand new series. Wait for it and... I beat the level. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. See ya.